uh, yeah, you should. Um, so I don't know whether I need, how do I turn that on for you, Andy? Uh, let's say just let me find that. Um, let's say allow record. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you want to do your own recording, Andy, you can. Um, so, so I have, I have, have a few, um, few old friends and, and Toastmasters colleagues here on the call and a bunch of people who who don't necessarily you know know me at all <laughs> except except through the website um, but um, you know, I hope you're going to get something useful out of the out of this session um, I should pause and take a breath is, is there anything that anybody wants to bring up up front about questions you want to make sure that I answer or things that you'd like me to cover uh, if, you, if you have something you want to say up front otherwise I'm going to I'm going to show a few slides and then I'm going to go into more of a how to demo. But uh, Dr. Byrne, what's up? The one question that I've been asked by a lot of people is to explain the benefits and features. What's so different about this system, particularly as it relates to the ability to market uh, and promote membership for your club? How is this different from Free Toast Toast, for example? Okay, sure. Um, well, I mean, I, I did mean for this session to focus mostly on kind of this administration aspect of how you administer your ad agenda. But um, I, I think I, I think I said it a, a, a few minutes ago. It might have been before you came in, Andy. But uh, because it's built on top of WordPress, you get to take advantage of these uh, features that have been developed by, you know. Countless bloggers. It's the most popular web publishing system in, in the world. Uh, it's used to power the New Yorker magazine. You know, you don't think of that as a blog necessarily, but it's a a, a way of publishing articles. Um, you know, the Walt Disney Investors site runs on on WordPress. Um, a, a, you know, a lot of other professional sites, and so things things like being able to view it on a mobile phone. Um, uh, having good search engine optimization and social media integration, that's, those are things that, that come along for the ride. And uh, let me, uh, Vincent, you had your yes. hand up? My, my question is, can I send my sign up email via WhatsApp? Uh, I, I don't have any kind of technical integration with WhatsApp. I, I mean, I know with my home club, actually, we often pull up that, um, that same view that you'd use to email out the agenda uh, where it shows the open roles and it shows the link and i'll copy and paste that into whatsapp because my, my home club does use uh, whatsapp as well okay. so, i mean you know, th th there are advantage advantages and disadvantages to all these things like you know some people may not like whatsapp uh and uh all of us get you know 300% as much email as we can read. So sometimes getting people's attention with email is pretty hard too. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, you know, I've tried to make it flexible, but there's no specific um, techie uh, integration with, with WhatsApp. Um, and somebody, um, I saw something about how much does it cost? Uh, the, the, there are actually several different ways that you can get access to the software, but the most common one is you go to toastmost.org, you sign up for a three month trial. And if your club deci decides that it's worthwhile, uh, it's $50 per year. And that is um, that is not making me fabulously wealthy. Uh, that is me trying to cover my costs. <laughs> it mm -hmm. costs me, me, me money to um, run this big web server too. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna plow ahead into some of the tutorial stuff that I wanted to go through. And there, there'll be plenty of time for more uh, questions along the way, but uh, Cassidy. Uh, one quick question I had regarding the agenda was, uh, I, or I guess that's sort of a discovery I made is that when we're adding agenda roles versus adding agenda notes. So if we are, adding an agenda role, that is going to be the first instance that that person doing that role is going to be speaking and any other 
instance that they're going to be in the meeting, we want to add as an agenda note. Is that correct? Um, well, not Otherwise, really. it'll show up as like, if the general evaluator is speaking once and then they come back into the meeting, we wouldn't want to put another general evaluator into the meeting. We that's, would want to have yes. them. Okay, yes, that's, that's correct. Um, okay. Uh, so you know, they're, 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 are, they're trying to do a couple of things at the same time, which maybe makes it more, it makes it uh, simpler and more complicated at the same time, I guess. Um, is, uh, so for example, when the Toastmaster of the day, uh, we're, trying, we're trying to set that up, I, I usually put the Toastmaster of the day at the top of the agenda and the top of the sign up form. So that's a place where people can sign up and it would also show up on the agenda. And I might associate that with five minutes of agenda time. And if, you know, for those of you who are brand new at this, we might be already be talking about stuff that uh, I need to take more time to explain the basics. Um, but, you know, the, so the other way of, usually the, the way I thought of that was when the Toastmaster of the day is introduced, and you know the, the protocol for these things varies between clubs, but say the Sergeant of Arms introduces the president, the president introduces the Toastmaster of the day, uh, and the Toastmaster of the day gets started. Um, I often would assign a block of time to the Toastmaster of the day. Uh, this is where he introduces all the other role players, the timer and the eye counter and, and so forth. And again, this may not be the way your club runs its meetings. So the, the other way of doing it is you can have these notes and the notes can have a so time associated with them. So anyways, I, I feel like we're getting uh, a couple of steps ahead of where we should be. I should, I should go through sort of like the basic structure and then, and then maybe get into more of these things as we do kind of the show and tell portion of this. So let me, um, I'm going to do just a couple of slides, Let's see. And are you seeing my, you should be seeing an intro slide that says this meeting's being recorded. Is that, being, is that showing up? Yeah. Give, me, give me a thumbs up, okay. Mine's a little, little challenging sometimes to know what people are seeing. So where, where I was showing the different views of the agenda, um, here's where you, you access this. When you, when you first pull it up, it's going to be in that sign up sheet form where there are buttons that say take role or edit role. But if I want to print it, I can click on print and the, you know, the printer dialogue will, will pop up. If I just want to view it on screen, I can go to show. If I want to go to email it out, I go to email. And then there are a few other variations. Uh, I can show the agenda on screen with the introduction. So if, if somebody entered an introduction on the sign-up sheet, I can see that in context, or I can display just the speech introductions. Uh, there's a little bit of a, an export to Word functionality, which was sort of intended so people could grab all that content and then manipulate it a little bit more in a familiar tool because they want to for, you know format it or Printed on fancy paper or something. Um, uh, there's a, there's a variation for just copying and pasting. Uh, there's a fairly elaborate system actually for uh, running contests, where you can give each judge a digital ballot that they fill out. So this this is handy for online contests in particular. Um, and. Uh, so each judge gets their own digital ballot and the chief judge can see can view a dashboard where they see those votes roll in. I'm not gonna go into detail on that tonight um, or this afternoon. Uh, the vote counters tool is for more routine voting during meetings. I could maybe show that briefly. And then there is also a little timer utility, although you kind of have to use that with some other software to make it um, really useful. Um, but most, mostly you would be using the print it, email it out, uh, or show it on screen. Uh, those are the most, uh, most common. 
Uh, and I don't know whether did I mention agenda with contacts is where you see who's assigned to each role, but you also see their email number and their, their email address and their phone number. So that if you need to follow up with somebody, uh, that can be handy. <clears throat> and then if, if you are the, the webmaster or you have been assigned editing rights on the site, you will see at the top of that agenda page, a link that says edit RSVP event. And it's RSVP event because um, one of the pieces of software that's, that's used in this solution is called RSVP maker. It is a, that is more of a general um, events calendar and event registration tool for WordPress, um, that, which is it's also, also something that, that uh, I created. Uh, and that can be used outside of a Toastmasters context, but you know we just use it for the agendas in this system. Um, so I can either edit the, uh, the specific event post for a specific day and time, or most of these events are gonna be based on a template. So the template is sort of the, the um, organization of how we usually run our meetings, okay? So if my typical meeting is three speakers, three evaluators plus table topics, the template would define that. I stamp out copies for each week that we're meeting. And then if I need to go in and tweak the agenda for a specific week, I can do that independently of the template. But if I need to change all my meetings, all my upcoming meetings, I would go to edit template, update that, and then there's a process for updating the individual meeting day events. So I, I hope that's, I, I, I do think people get confused on this point. So you know, I'll, I'll spend some time on it to try and make it as, as clear as I possibly can. And then the agendas themselves are built out of building blocks. Uh, so WordPress has this concept of content blocks. So if you open, if you're gonna create a blog post, you would go to create, create a new post, you'd enter the headline. And if you just start typing, you're creating a bunch of paragraphs or they would call them paragraph blocks. If you want to, insert a heading, you would insert a heading block. You want to insert an image or an image gallery. Those are blocks. Well, I have specialized blocks for setting up meeting agendas. And if you click the, the add a block button in the upper left corner of the screen and type in the word agenda, you will see what's shown on the screen. So it's a list of things. Now, the ones that we use the, the most are the agenda role and the agenda note. And maybe the, there's one called the editable agenda note, which is what, what I often use for say theme and word of the day, something that changes from week to week. And we want to make it easy for the Toastmaster of the day who may not be the webmaster or an editor of the site. We wanna make it easy for them to, to change those things. So that, that's the whole list. Um, the, the role block allows you to either pick from a list of predefined roles like Toastmaster of the Day or Speaker. And then the, there are a few parameters associated with that. Uh, and you, you can also put in your, your own custom role. So if, you're, if your club has a quiz master, which I guess is, is fairly common in some clubs, uh, you would you would instead of picking off the list, you would say custom role and you would type in the name of that role, quiz master. You specify how many occurrences of that. So usually you only have one Toastmaster of the day, but you might have three speakers and three evaluators. So whereas it says count in the sidebar, you would change that to three if you want three speakers. Um, and then you can do the time allowed for that. So for speakers, if it's three speakers, then you know the bare minimum you would want would be 21 minutes, three times seven. You might wanna allow a little bit of extra time in there for the um, 
the longer speech uh, when that when that happens. So you can put in these parameters and you can change these parameters here. And this is what I was talking about a little bit with Cassidy uh, before, is that often I will assign time on the agenda with these roles, but you don't, there's another way of doing it, which I'm gonna to get to now, which is called an agenda note. And I always refer to this as being sort of the stage directions of your meeting. So this is the part of our meeting where the Sergeant of Arms introduces the president. How long does that take? You know, we, it takes a minute or two. And so you can just type in whatever text you want to appear in that spot, but you can associate that with a certain amount of time that's gonna be on the agenda. And um, as we were saying, there, there might be certain roles where we introduce the person at the beginning and we want it to show up near the top of the um, top of the of the sign up form, uh, but maybe we want to have something later. Where, uh, for example, Toastmaster of the day at the beginning, they have their block of time where they introduce the other role players. Toastmaster of the day comes back at the end and says who won speaker of the day. So that second appearance of the Toastmaster of the day in the meeting, you'd probably would model as an agenda note. Now, those are the ones that you, you'll use the most. Um, there is also this editable note where you just put in a label. So this is theme, or maybe, maybe in your club, it might be theme and word of the day that you have show up on the agenda. Now, if if nothing else happens, you'll just get a little placeholder with the headline that says theme and there'll be nothing in there unless somebody comes along and clicks on the button there that says edit to edit it. They'll get a little, a little uh, editor widget they can use to type in the theme, the word of the day, they click update, and then that will show up in that spot on the agenda. So again, it's 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 a meant to be a convenient way of changing something that changes from meeting to meeting without having to go into the WordPress editor or for people who don't necessarily have security rights to get into the WordPress editor. Because you don't you should have um, a few people. I, I, I recommend having more than one person who has administrator rights on the site and maybe a couple more who have editor rights on the site, but you don't want to hand it out like, like candy. You don't want the person who just joined the club and might be um, completely nuts to, to be able to edit your website and change what's on the, uh, the homepage. <laughs> so you, you want to be a little bit careful with some of that stuff. Uh, and, and then the, these last ones I'm going to mention, these don't get used as much, but they are available for you. Uh, so say I, on my, my meeting that's going to happen right around July 4th, I want to have the, um, the fireworks display shown here as an image on the website. And my head might be blocking the, uh, the buttons on the right-hand side, but there, there are these little toggle buttons that allow you to say where that should appear. And uh, I've checked off that it should appear on the sign up page and on the emails that I'm going to send out, I'm going to have my little fireworks, but I don't want it displayed on the printable agenda. Um, yeah, so you, you, can, you can set these different contexts of where it should be available. Um, you can also decide whether it's visible to only people who are logged in. Um, and so this is a wrapper. Um, there's this little widget in the editor, and I probably should show it to you when we do the, the live demo part, but there's a, a widget where you can see what sort of the hierarchy of things is, and it's showing that the, the, the image is embedded inside this display wrapper. So you could put uh, multiple paragraphs, headings, whatever images uh, in there and have them appear only in a specific context. Again, this is this is sort of fancier, um, for fancier effects, 
Uh, mostly I'm going to be talking about the, the roles and the notes uh, blocks. Um, a couple of others. The, there, there is, just like there is uh, an agenda note that only appears on the agenda, not on the sign-up form, there's also the sign-up form note that only appears on the sign-up form, uh, not on the agenda. So for example, um, on the, on the sign-up form, you should say, you might put a note that says, uh, you know, if you, if you've spoken for the last three meetings, uh, you know, don't monopolize the speaking slots on the agenda. Right. So some kind of instruction like that for how you want people to sign up or not sign up for roles. Uh, but you wouldn't want that to appear on your printed agenda. There's no need for it there. There's a, a block called uh, absences, Toastmasters absences, that allows you to have a widget on your agenda where people can click to say, I won't be able to make this meeting, uh, or in fact, I won't be able to make the next three meetings. Uh, they can indicate that so that you're not pestering people to sign up for roles when they're out of town. <sighs> and last couple, I'm just including for the sake of being complete, uh, there is also a little box that we've used in my club that is doing hybrid meetings where you can ask people to indicate whether they'll be attending in person. And at some point, because of COVID issues and such, we were limiting the number of people who we wanted to attend in person. Um, that's kind of fallen by the wayside now, but we still do have a prompt on the agenda to ask people to let us know are you coming in person or will you just be online? And then the, the milestone, uh, really the only place I use that is at, at the very end, I put in that little block and it just displays on the agenda to show what the, the end time of the meeting is uh, based on how I've had it timed out. All right. Um, so, you know, I put these things in slides mostly so that you'd be able to see them um, clearly more clearly maybe than, than when I do the live demo. So um, I hope that that has been helpful. <laughs> um, we will we'll try and uh, improve it as we go along. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pause again to ask for questions, anything I went through too fast. All right, if not, let's see, I do see people have posted stuff in the chat, but... Uh, I have one question. Yes, please. Go ahead. This is regarding that. So I believe that you were on, you click on um, posts, and then you add a new post, and then you have a bunch of options that say text, media, design, widgets. Is that where we're at? Is that what you were talking about? Widgets, I'm not, games. let's see. Well, oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Hold on a moment. Okay. Let me... uh, so I think these could be used to make an agenda, or perhaps are with the agenda. Can you show me where you got to all this, where you're going? Is yeah, this is, right there? Uh, are, are, are you working with one of these sites currently, Ben, by the way? Or, uh, yeah, um... I'm on the site. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, were you talking about this up here where it says new? So how did you get to the part uh, where you were presenting and showing the different widgets and uh, options that you can do? Okay, well, let's start. Let's, uh, so this is my, my demo site. Um, okay. So, so we, we can mess with that without breaking anything. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, so if I view in a, an individual uh, meeting event okay. um, and from here I'm going to go to the editor okay so editor uh, so the, the link said edit RSVP event okay and so there, there are actually a few different places where you can click to add a block but um, let's see so is the block like a something that you're adding to the agenda? Right. And, and this is, okay. the, again, this is the same thing that you would use if you're writing a blog post and you wanted to add an image. 
Um, and, and in fact, I can add an image here. Okay. Um, so, it, so this is the this is you know referred to as the block inserter. I think is is WordPress terminology for it. So if I type in image, I'll get a bunch of options for different kinds of images that I can add or image galleries. Um, okay. If I do agenda, I get things that are relevant to editing an agenda. And so this is adding a role. And so okay. let me let me actually. Um, Nice. And, and, and there's there, there's this this sidebar um, it, in in some views it might actually disappear on you, so there's this little gear icon here that I click to make sure that the sidebar is displayed. So when I'm working, when I'm working with the the roll block, uh, so select roll is not set. Um, if I want to make a custom roll, um, and let's see, quiz master. So the quid quiz master, we only have one per meeting. They come on at the very beginning, uh, and they have uh, you know five minutes to quiz us on some, something interesting. Uh, so that is um, the basic layout. Uh, there is also a spot where you can put in an, an explanation of the role to appear on the agenda. So um, uh, she's what we know and let's see if i update this go up i can look at it okay so now i have a, a new role called quiz master uh, that i can sign up for or assign to somebody or there's also this suggestion mode where i'm going to send somebody a note saying i you know, I see you haven't done this in a while. Why don't you do it for the next meeting? Um, okay, that's great. Thank you. Uh, one right. more question. Uh, one of the options in there is embeds. What are embeds? It has like Twitter, YouTube, Vimeo. Yeah, um, that it, it wouldn't be so relevant to um, editing an agenda. But for example, you... you um, there are certain there are certain um, social media properties where they have made it relatively easy to embed content, um, and oh, what the heck? Would it be like a link? Yeah, it's it's actually what you do. Uh, okay, hold on a moment. If, if I want to add this video, and typically, again, you'd probably be editing it not to an agenda, but to something like a blog post. Uh, if I paste this in here, if I paste that link in there, it will embed the video. Um, so um, you, you can also choose, I could, could have also chosen the, um, the YouTube block which I think would be listed under embeds uh, and uh, you know, paste the link in, in that, uh, that frame. Um, I usually just show it as the copy and paste uh, because that's the, that's the fast way of doing it. But it also works with, uh, if you, on Twitter, if you select an individual tweet, if you wanted to write about the, you know, the latest crazy thing that uh, Elon Musk has said, you could embed his tweet uh, in your blog post, uh, things like that, or 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 it could be, um, you know, maybe maybe a more Toastmaster specific example is if you're writing a blog post about uh, a world championship speech and you want to embed that speech that you're commenting on, or you're a member of your club has just won at you know division or maybe even district, and you want to celebrate at that on the home page, you can embed that video so yeah that's that's what an embed is uh long long-winded right. explanation thank you i All appreciate right. that okay um so and there, there are a few other things i should just show you about um working with these blocks there, there 
so there's the this plus button in the upper left hand corner if you can see that so this is my add block uh, button that brings up that whole list um, the other way to do it is if you put your your pointer mouse pointer between two blocks and click plus uh, you can click what it is that you want to embed in that spot so if I wanted to add another role, I would choose this. Um, also, if I select a block, there are little up and down arrows here. So if I want to move something higher or lower, I can do it that way. Uh, also, there's a little, um, it looks like a little grippy icon. Um, so if I put my mouse over that and I drag, I can reposition something that way so you know these things all take a little bit of getting used to um, in general if you want to delete something you can highlight it uh, and click your delete button uh, there is also something um, this little pop-up menu here uh, has options like remove uh, or insert before or insert after or duplicate um so those are some things that you can you can tweak <clears throat> so um and um so i i talked about how when we we introduce a role we can associate time with it so that in the agenda view, the printable agenda view, we see a list of the timings of different things. Uh, there is a, this little toggle here should give me a summary of what these times add up to the way we have it right now. You know, actually it looks like we have it timed out to be a nice one hour meeting. Um, but if I, you know, added some time here and updated that and look at this again, then probably we would see that our meeting is running a little bit over. Let's see. Um, so that should show that now we're going four minutes over if it's supposed to be an hour meeting. And so those, those are tools that are available to you to try and help you uh, plan out these things and make it make needed adjustments along the way. Uh, as I mentioned, that associating time with a role is one way to do it, but I could also have something, something messed up here. Let's see if that will, never mind. Um, so president wraps up the meeting. So th this is an, an example of the, the president uh, is being introduced. The president is not actually a role that you sign up for, um, at least not in the same way that changes from week to week. But here's a stage direction that says the president uh, wraps up the meeting and we as associate a minute with that or Toastmaster of the day presents the awards. Gee, maybe a minute isn't long enough, we need three minutes. And so we can adjust these things as we go along. Um, so just like I added a role, I can add an agenda note. And I'll just get a blank spot here where I can type a little bit of information. Um, and in the sidebar, I have an opportunity to associate time with that if appropriate. You know, in the one example from my meetings is we typically have a five minute break uh, at Club Awesome. So, you know, you would just type in five minute break and you wanna make sure that you account for that in your planning. So you make time allowed five. <clears throat> um, the the editable note uh, 
is where instead of you know, time associated with that too, if you want. Um, and so this, it could be theme and word of the day. It could be um, special guest, something like that. Um, but something that can be changed from the front end. And so now if I go out and view this, should have something down here that says special guest. And you know, if I, if I, if I forget to update this or, or there is no special guest, it'll just be a little placeholder on the agenda. Um, but here is where I would put a director visiting beyond your best behavior. <sighs> All right. Um, now I do find that people get confused about a number of these things. So I definitely wanna make sure that I take time to answer questions and go over things that people uh, might have been confused by or that I went by, by too fast. Any further questions right now? Yes, David, I had one. Where is this recording going to be found? Because that's going to be very helpful. Sure. Um, so if, um, I, I mean, I'll send it out to all the people who are registered for the event uh, afterwards. And it will also be on the WordPress for Toastmasters website. Actually, when I was showing my slides, I stopped before the last slide, which wasn't smart. Um, let's see. Um, the last slide. Oh, I, I did want to mention that there is now this, this uh, button in here uh, at the top of the agenda that says uh, click for help and uh, it'll show a link to where you can find help. Um, and this is where you find the, the um, information. There's a kind of the marketing for the, the concept uh, and the blog is at wpfortoastmasters.com. There's a whole knowledge base section that is the documentation, which is what Cynthia and Daniel are working on with me to improve. There is a separate website for RSVP maker as well. Um, the documentation there also needs to be improved. And the, uh, the place that you go to create a club website is toastmost.org. Uh, there's my email address. Um, so, uh, now I could go through some, some other things. Maybe, maybe I should share that, that uh, screen where you can update the history because actually I've been, been working on making that better uh, lately. And uh, I mentioned Lonnie, who is working with me on some of the, the actual coding level improvements. She runs a club called Dungeons and Toast, or is associated with the club that is for role-playing game enthusiasts. And so they have a whole, uh, a whole point system associated with earning points for signing up for roles. So they've, they've gamified uh, the setup, uh, sort of in keeping with the, the character of that club. And so, and so she was working with me to try and make sure that the, the record keeping was accurate enough that they could make sure that they were giving people credit for the right things and not double counting anything. Um, so let me show you that briefly. Um, let's see. So I don't know how many clubs do this. Where is it? No. But some some clubs will keep very detailed um, meeting minutes too. So this can also be fed into your meeting minutes. So this is where I would go. This would be a better example. It's more filled in. So this is where I would go to make corrections because this was open before the meeting started, um, but hopefully, thankfully, um, 
Andy stepped in and took that role. Uh, and as I go down, I maybe I find some other corrections I want to make that Clara turned out to be available to give a speech. And we can put in some of the, the basic details about, about her speech. And maybe we also want to know if we, you can um, record through the system uh, who was the speaker of the day. Demo member uh, got the best speaker award. He would add another speech on the end. And then down here, there's a place where you can check off who attended. So when you're going into to meeting minutes, when you need to establish that you had a quorum, this would be a little bit easier to do it that way. So I'll save those changes and it will come back and give me the option to create a minutes document. So I can do that. And here we are again in the editor, except it's preloaded all these details about who did what at the meeting. And down the end, it says, these people all held a role. These people didn't have a role, but they, they were in attendance and the total attendance was 31. And here are the people who were absent. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, this is of course garbage data because it's from my, from a demo site. Now, this is a document that would only be viewable by members of the club. So if somebody else tries to go to this page who is not logged in or is not a member of the club, uh, they'll just see a message saying that you need to be logged in to view this content. Um, however, if what I, what I wanna do is take this and email it out to people, or print it, there are links up top that allow me to, for example, email out the minutes. And this is very similar to the way you would email out the agenda. So you can send it to all members, or maybe this is just a draft that you want uh, officers to comment on and correct before you share it with the rest of the club. So, and, you know, you can create meeting documents that aren't necessarily just based on um, those meeting records. So if it, if it was a board meeting, you could just say, you know, board meeting of June 18th, 2022. And then uh, we voted to impeach the president. And then you would record who voted for and against the impeachment of your club president for their terrible misdeeds. So, you know, really the, the, the goal is to provide you with some, some hopefully flexible building blocks that you can use a number of different ways. And we have a couple of hands raised. So let me go to Christine first. I just wanted to, good afternoon and thank you for this training. I wanted to find out on the front page of the website, we have a, a button where you can see the members. How do you um, update the officer list on that page? Okay. Um, so let, let's just go back to screen sharing for a moment so that we understand what we're talking about. So this is part of the kind of the default setup of the site and you, you know, you can, you can change this, but the menu includes a link to the members page and the officers are listed up top. Uh, most of them don't have pictures showing up, um, but uh, so that is driven by in, if you go to Club administration and go to settings, or there's also a settings um, section farther down on the dashboard screen. So if I go to settings in here, um, 
it will list off different roles. Um, now this is not a complete um, complete list, but uh, of arms, we can designate the person who's going to fill that role uh, going forward. And um, this field is actually a little abbreviation for uh, an email alias. So you can write to demo hyphen president at toastmos.org to send that person an email. Um, and I could assign all these people additional security privileges, or I can decide that that uh, Suzanne should be another administrator on the site. So this is where I would record my changes. Um, let's see. And so if I go back and view my members page, I should see that that's updated. Now, the the public website would list the officers, or let me show you a real example. Um, well, let's go back to Club Awesome since they're the. So this was my this was my original uh, home club that I worked on this for. And so, if we go to the members page, we see the officers up top. And then there are also other members who have chosen to make their information uh, public. Uh, if, if I'm logged in and I'm a member of the club, then I will see a more complete list. But these are people who, you know, for some people use it as an additional little promo vehicle for their, their social media presence. So you can have your, a link to your uh, your LinkedIn page, that kind of thing. You can have uh, on this this directory page, but the officers are driven off of that that setting screen, um, and also in the the principal let's say the principal version of the agenda. Um, it. This format can be changed, but but by default, the officers are listed in the sidebar here. So that's just a way of making sure that guests who come to your meetings can easily see who the officers are, uh, figure out how to spell their names, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so um, I hope nobody's out counting during this meeting, because particularly when I'm doing demos, it goes crazy. So, I mean, you know, there, there definitely are, are more things I could show you. It, but I also find that sometimes I throw too much at people uh, and I make it more overwhelming instead of more comprehensible. <laughs> so if, if you have things you, you do want me to go over. Uh, yes, Tricia. Um, what I... I think uh, I tried once to put together an agenda and I think it was okay, but I wanted to save it as a draft and I couldn't figure out how. So I just left that tab open for days until I was satisfied with it. I wasn't sure exactly how this, the, the saving process goes when you just want it in draft mode and you're not ready to put it out on a calendar or say that this is the new format for a day that you're trying to build in advance? Sure. Um, well, I mean, there's there's more than one way, which is not always necessarily a, a good answer. But um, what you what you might do is just create sort of a, a mock up event. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, actually, one thing that I've done where I sort of don't want the club maybe to see this change uh, right away. Um, what I might do is if I go into events, it's gonna list them chronologically. So these are all the events that have been, you know, recorded in the system so far. Are you uh, uh, sharing oh, or are you trying to share? <laughs> That's okay. Good point. <laughs> 
I make that mistake almost as often. Oh, I forget to un <laughs> unmute myself, right? Um, actually, there, there, there's something else that I should show you first. Um, so the event templates are all listed here. Um, and I tried to show you earlier that if you're looking at the a, a specific date, you'll you'll see a link at the top of the screen that says edit RSVP event, but then underneath that there's a spot where if it's based on a template, it will say edit template. Mm -hmm. So that's another way of of navigating to this. But in this case, I go to this event. Um, and yeah, maybe I am trying to change how every week's meeting will be structured. Uh, so we've decided that our meetings are running too long. We can't have three speakers. We have to have two. So we're going to change the number of speakers, the number of evaluators. Let's see. OK. So I've made that change here in the template, but it's, it, it hasn't been copied to the individual events yet. Um, so there's actually a prompt that comes up at the top of the screen and says create update events based on this template. So we haven't done that yet. I uh, click here and it will show me the upcoming weeks that are already on the agenda um, or that are already on the website that people can already view. Mm -hmm. And it will show me the projected dates based on our schedule, which is every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So maybe I go ahead and add these. Um, well, actually, what, what, I, what, I, what I wanted to, what I really wanted to show you was looking ahead, I can take a meeting it maybe is a couple of months in the future to experiment with. Mm -hmm. So that might be the easiest uh, way to do it is nobody's gonna see this until December and we might, right. might change, change what we wanna do between now and then. So I come in here uh, and I make changes because we're actually we're gonna have two topics masters now. I don't know how that's gonna work, but so, uh, and then I could share this link with another officer and say, what do you think of this way of organizing our agenda? Um, or, or you could just pick an individual week where you actually try it. You don't, mm -hmm. change, you don't change the template yet, but you change it for that specific week. And how do people like having a quiz master as, as part of our standard meeting? So... Um, those are at least some some ideas. Now, I mean, if if I made this a draft, you wouldn't want to make next week's meeting uh, change it to be a draft because then it right. wouldn't go up on the website. People wouldn't be able to sign up for roles. Um, so again, my idea is maybe maybe pick something a few few uh, weeks or months in the future, experiment with that, and then and then once you feel confident that you've got a, a model that makes sense. Uh, then go ahead and do it. Okay. Dr. Byrne. You're muted still. There I have go. two questions, David. Uh, you have a number of automations in a system because I see notification prior to the meeting or who signed up and those are automatically done. Two case uses that I didn't know whether they had built in the system or potentially listed it as something for the future. If you're trying to maintain contact with members who are becoming less committed and start missing meetings, is there something in the system that if you're checking off who's in attendance, if the system sees that a member has not attended for two weeks in a row, for example, an automatic message goes out to them, we've seen you have, you know, and you can sort of like text expender, you can create the message and say if their member has not shown up two weeks in a row, they get a message that says, we miss you, uh, is everything okay? We see that you've missed two uh, meetings in a row. Right. Is that kind of automation in the system already and I just don't know where it is? Or is this <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, I, I don't have that currently. 
you know, there, there, there's a balance between making things automatic and, um, you know, not not inviting Skynet to take over your meetings uh, either. Uh, Skynet I, I Skynet is the term, Terminator <laughs> uh, movie thing, but uh, uh, you, you you don't want to. Uh, um, I don't want to over automate things, and I definitely don't want to make assumptions about how other clubs want to run their meetings. So I'm a, I'm a little bit cautious about some of those things. I think actually um, one thing that I could do though is a report that shows um, uh, you know who hasn't attended in the last X weeks. I was gonna say um, maybe a good substitute for that would be to be able to send an automated report to certain officers or certain people right. who need to know I, that I, the absences I, I, I are think, accumulated. I, because I think actually the the, you want to have the balance between the automation and the personal touch too. Right, right? Right. And so, so yeah, I think if some along those lines, maybe alerting the VP of membership that somebody hasn't shown up in a month uh, would be a good idea. But, but I also, what I found as a practical matter is that officers who are really active and interested often go beyond what their role is on paper. You know, so I know a VP of membership who came up with a lot of really creative ideas about the educational program uh, and getting people to sign up for roles. Uh, you might know who that is, Tricia. So, um, so you know, people sometimes sort of exceed their charter. And, you know, well, of course, you have other people who are slackers too, <laughs> and other other folks have to step up and and compensate for what they're not doing. So. Um, so again, I, I, I think there, there are lots of things that are possible um, and things that could be made easier. Uh, part, of, part of the purpose of sessions like this is to get feedback on, on ideas like that, of things that could make it better. Um, you know, I, I do have to confess to people that I am a professional writer and editor and a self-taught programmer. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, for help from other people. If people ha have technical skills, if people have skills in documentation and training materials, uh, like Cynthia is, is working to develop, I would, uh, I'm, I'm looking for help. <laughs> uh, I'd like to, uh, it, it, is, it is starting to, finally starting to grow beyond being completely, you know, a one-man show. And you know, I, I, I should acknowledge that there are a lot of, a lot of people who sort of encouraged me along the way. Uh, Dr. Byrne, who's in the meeting is, is one of them. And there, there are others too who definitely encouraged me and helped me promote the idea. Um, but uh, but I've, I've recently trying to get help, including uh, summer interns and uh, other enthusiasts who are, who are helping to improve some other aspects of things too. So, I will follow up with, with all of you with, with a recording of this. It sounds like we're wrapping up. Is there a one more question? There's Cassidy. Yeah. Um, not on anything in particular we discussed today, but something that came to mind that uh, maybe could be another topic for another session maybe is uh, email newsletters is something I've been wanting to uh, do for my club but I have no idea where to start so um oh. just thought I could, that might be something I could uh, potentially I, I, utilize the platform for <laughs> I do I do have a tool for that and actually I'm very proud of this um uh I don't know whether I I, I, can, I can show it to you real briefly um and there is a, a blog post that I'll I'll share with you and this is actually something that I've been working for years to try and make it better um, so I'm going to go over to my RSVP maker site. Okay, so this is um, the website with the basic uh, scheduling plugin set up. And there are a bunch of fake events here that you can sign up for. Uh, and then for email newsletters, you know, there are a lot of 
my email newsletters are based around promoting events, um, but they can also include other kinds of content. Let me see if I can find the... Oh. Okay, here's the one. So this is also set up inside the editor, um, but it's displayed in a special template where you can put in uh, different kinds of components. Uh, you can include promos for future events. You can include, include a video that you want people to promote. Uh, in fact, when, when I send out the, the follow-up message uh, with a video of this session, uh, I'll, I'll create it in this tool. And so um, this is how this is set up inside the editor where we can have um, blocks that have things like a colored background um, and if i was on the one of the wordpress or one of the toastmasters sites uh, the colors would actually be standard um, toastmasters theme colors um, so you can do things like colored backgrounds and couple of columns and embed a video. So uh, I'll, I'll send a, a link out about this tool after the, the call. Or actually it's it's um, the, the last workshop I did, which was a little bit more of a promotion of why people should take advantage of this. Um, the, the replay of that also has the, the a video demo of this in here. So, um, and well, just just to keep it in the the context of promoting events. Um, so, so this is that same kind of a, a widget that you might include on your your home page. You can include it also in one of these documents. And so uh, when this is sent out, it would include those links inviting people to sign up. So anyways, that's uh, something maybe to, to look at uh, as a follow-up. And uh, I you know, encourage you to, to, to tinker with stuff, give me feedback. If things are broken, uh, that happens from time to time, uh, let me know. Don't beat your head against the wall too too long trying to trying to figure something out because it is possible that there's a some kind of software bug, and uh, we try and try and have fewer of them over time. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, uh, thank you everybody. Thanks for joining me, and I'll follow up. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Take care. Thank you.